Okay, now let's look at the third area. In this case, a friend of mine has, uh, her husband is uh, foreign born from Eastern Europe. And when he goes to the store and he looks at shampoo, he gets confused because the shampoo bottle says for dry scalp. He gets confused by the wording there he thinks that this type of shampoo will give you dry scalp. And therefore he gets confused about the intent and agentry of the shampoo itself and, and the labeling. What he's confused about, of course, is just sim the simple preposition for. So depending on how these are used in the context that they're used, um, there's built-in confusion. Uh, in particular, I'm finding that um, you have to be very explicit about this, but in dialogue, in discussions, this is where you pick up the intent of these things. Uh, they're always made more clear through discussion. Okay, so let's go on now into um, looking at um, other natural ways in which students acquire. In other words, natural meaning that uh, by having the experience, they're able to deduce exactly how the vocabulary is used. And in this case, I'm showing you a um, longitudinal uh, concept map that was done by an eighth grade girl. And um, her topic was the Pearl Harbor attack. Um, you can see that she's using three different colors. Um, the light blue was used the first day the red the second, and green the third. And, and so therefore the green is really showing uh, the type of details that she's arriving at. Uh, the larger, uh, more central concepts are developed the first day. But, uh, but notice uh, some of the details in this case, Ambassador Nichisaburo, and um, this one down here, the American Embargo, um, these signal to me that the student is really picking up on some vocabulary. Uh, in other words, a proper name and a term uh, of the American embargo that was currently underway on the petroleum products for Japan to be able to uh, drive its industry. Remember that the American and Americans had put an embargo on selling petroleum to Japan. So England, uh, France, the United States, were embargoing oil, and in particular, that was happening in in uh, the South Pacific, uh, the area around Indonesia, and uh, <clears throat> the um, area around Vietnam. All of these were uh, oil uh, exporting areas to Japan to that point. So, being able to uh, learn words, um, they're set down in the context that the student is using in that they are learning. So this student had read the book and she's in, in essence she's creating a concept map um, on showing you what she has picked up from this. And by having to structure the knowledge um, she's showing how she's grappling uh, with vocabulary. All right, now we're going to talk about uh, uh, concept circles. And you can see I have a concept circle here that's been made and uh, mostly we're going to be dealing with um, uh, oil spill information. So let's look at the first segment about how you put together concept circles. So in other words, we're now using strategies to be able to uh, get students to be able to set down vocabulary using the vocabulary uh, out of all the different, some of the experiences that they've been using it thematically. Um, this is what I mean by, you know, having a thematic unit is so much more powerful way to be able to uh, learn vocabulary. Um, one way is to use all of the words in the circle that they're related and the students must tell how they're related. Okay, so in, in the first case um, I'm showing you um, two concept circles um, and I've grouped four words that really uh, in indicate uh, there's some type of relationship here. Tarball fumes, corexit, corexit is the dispersant uh, to be able to break up the oil spill, and plume. Uh, plume is the sort of underwater phenomenon of 
super cold water mixing with super cold oil. Oil normally rises to the surface, but not so after it's been sprayed with a dispersant. And I've labeled that as, you know, the overriding idea here is oil spill. And, and again, I could uh, write in four areas here, BP, dispersant, relief well, and blowout preventer. And we're talking about, uh, you can see the oil spill. All right, I've done a couple of others down here. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this. Oil rig deep water drilling lease sales. In other words, the sales that were done by the federal government to enable uh, BP to start drilling. And the moratorium that was listed lifted on uh, offshore drilling. Um, and this all has to do with offshore oil drilling. Okay, last um, we can talk about Transocean Limited, BP, deep water drilling, and safety. So exactly, you know, what feature would we be looking at for that? Well, in some ways we could think of it as um, the sloppiness or irresponsibility that these companies, BP and Transocean, exhibited for by ignoring safety and doing a, a very, very haphazard job in deep water drilling. So we would be talking about um, irresponsibility in deep water drilling. Um, all right, so I've given you a, a PDF uh, link over here on Concept Circles, and, and uh, you'll be able to download these blank sheets. Uh, this is coming to you from Kent State University. I suspect it's um, Joanne and Rich Vaca, Vaca and Vaca, your textbook writers, uh, that you'll be able to create those. All right, let's go and take a look at, at a couple of other ones. Um, here I have, I've added in wetlands, wildlife, tar balls, and estuary. So exactly, how can we label this now? You know, what would we call this grouping? And I'm going to go ahead and show uh, the effects of the oil spill. 